Ahoy there, my name's Beth and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. Well, we might not have much water this week, but we've certainly got some jobs to do. Guess who didn't listen to me and went straight into the mud and thinking it was water? Have you got your boots on now? Oh dear.
you might be able to see that we've got quite a lot of water back in the basin and um, the reason why we had no water um, yesterday was because there's been a problem with the lock, lock gate. Pert's having a sniff down there. So um, there are two gates, or at least there are three gates. There's two outer gates and one inner gate. And um, the other day, uh, well, about 12 hours before, uh, well, the other day, um, the uh, harbour master heard a bang and then came to have a look and noticed that the inner gate had actually bent inwards slightly or come inwards slightly so he went down and had a look and uh, and it seems that the uh, the hinge from the bottom of the gate has uh, pulled off it's sheared off the gate itself so actually the gate now is inoperable so we can't actually open and close it um, so everyone's stuck inside and usually that inner gate is the one that we use to keep the water in. The outer gate, um, the, the um, paddles, the gate paddles are open. So the pound actually just fills up and, and empties quite a lot. But at the moment, um, you might be able to see, but we'll, I'll show you around in a sec. The, the river um, is actually much lower than, than the, uh, the basin at the moment or the cut here. And, um, and so we've got the um, outer gates closed to try and keep some water in because if we had those paddles opened as usual uh, every time the tide goes out we would lose all of the water in the basin and it's fine really but it's just it's a bit of a pain uh, you know you've got to constantly check lines so that's one thing I needed to do yesterday as well is um, as soon as we realized we we're going to lose all the water we needed to uh, to disappear uh, around the the, uh, the, the pontoons and uh, make sure all of the boats, especially the big boats, their lines were all okay. And, uh, and actually there were a couple of them that were, that were a bit tight, including mine. Um, so I actually had my lines in a mode that keeps the boat nice and close to the edge. Um, but of course that means that um, if, the, uh, if the pontoons drop further than the boat does, which happens when we dry out, uh, it means those lines will be much tighter so um so i loosened those off and i've actually changed my line slightly to be uh, to be slightly more of a longer bow and stern line um which is uh, is better just in case we're going to move up and down a little bit so i'm going to leave it like that so um so yeah so the inner gate is broken um and uh, and the yard who did all the work on my boat they've been down and, uh, and they can repair it, but uh, it means that the gate is out of action for a little while. So I guess the plan is to, um, to lift the gate out uh, with a crane. And as soon as we do that, actually, I can start leaving the, the basin again um, because um, I always uh, come through the, um, the gates as they're both open. So I need to free flow through because uh, uh, my boat doesn't fit into the pound. So we need to open both the gates anyway. So it won't really make that much difference to me. Uh, assuming that we get the, the gate lifted out. So we're going to have to get that lifted out and then uh, repaired and then lifted back in again. So, um, so it's a reasonable job. The hardest part about it all is, uh, is actually getting the crane here, of course. Uh, that's the biggest hassle. Um, but uh, jobs are really easy if you've got the right tools. If you don't have the right tools, they're next to impossible sometimes. And this is definitely one of those cases.
Now a bit of my good old favourite spray foam. So that's looking really nice now. Um, I've got the, uh, the foam in, so I'll just let that go off for, um, for 24 hours or something and I might put a little bit more in when it's a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, so it's got, uh, it's got a layer of, um, of mastic on the outside, which I've made a bit of a mess of actually. I'm not very good at doing that, but it'll be fine. Um, and then I put um, a layer of mastic on the inside as well, uh, just as like a double gasket, if you like. And then I've put some spray foam in, which will expand and fill in the gaps. So that's just for insulation really, and just to avoid condensation um, building up around there. So, um, so yeah, it looks really nice. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. So, um, so yeah, the only thing I need to do is I need to cut the top beading, uh, which I've got a pattern for that. So I need to cut that out with a jigsaw, but um, otherwise it's finished. The window is completely in now and um, and I'm going to tidy it up a little bit in the future um, but it's all now it's watertight it's weatherproof it's all fitted properly so I'm really pleased with that so it's taken about a year to get around to actually doing that so I didn't rush into it anyway but um but yeah I'm pleased with the result so yeah I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's followed me in the last week uh, since I posted the uh, the film of us sailing back from the Netherlands um, and thank you as also to the uh, people from the Netherlands who've replied as well. And um, and I understand that we're bringing uh, you know a Dutch barge back from the Netherlands to the UK. Um, but I wanted to say that you know we we really respect the the, the boats and um, and we'll care for them properly. So um, so don't worry that we're just going to bring them over here and do something awful to them because we're not. We really respect them and uh, and really love them very much. Um, and uh, are very proud to uh, kind of represent Dutch barges in the UK as well. Um, so uh, also I did a little bit of history of my barge, which is in that video. Um, so you might be interested in that. And, uh, and I've had loads of really good feedback from that video of people kind of helping me with some details and, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, if you'd like to watch that one and, uh, and any information you can give me uh, that would be really, uh, really welcome. Um, so, uh, with uh, in the future, I'll be doing a few of the kind of open days and things um, uh, on the Thames. And so, I'm going to put together an information pack and put that out with the boat, so I can kind of really uh, talk, um, you know, about uh, about Dutch barges and about uh, um, about Groninger bulls. Like this, this boat is a Groninger bull. Um, so yeah. So thanks for thank you for subscribing in the last week um, and thank you as well to the people that have been with me uh, for a long time i really appreciate you um, and thank you very much for, for sticking with me uh, on this adventure so it sometimes feels a little bit like we don't make much progress certainly week to week but um but then sometimes things are finished and uh, it, you know we can kind of move on so the next big job I'm going to do, other than the kind of extra bits and bobs that I've done this week, sort of checking the engine and things like that, uh, the next big job to do is to start on the on the flooring, to remove the flooring and to sort out the bilges and put flooring back down and then put walls on, put walls up. Um, so I've also decided that I'm going to get rid of my storage room because my storage unit is not too far away, but it costs me like 180 quid a month. And I'd much rather put 180 quid worth of money into the boat than into storage. So I'm going to bring all of that back next week. So I'm going to be tripping over that junk for a while, but uh, maybe it'll make me sort it out a little bit. Anyway, that's the window for this week. Um, thanks again for watching. Thanks for staying with me. And uh, I hope wherever you are, you're safe and well. And I'll see you next time.